Welcome back to the Making International Law in Korea video series. In this video, I'll be explaining to you the, one of the important issues of the international in Korea, which is the, from Japanese colonialism and a war-torn country to become an Asian power. Korea's experience in international relations is rather unique in a sense that Korea emerged not only from Japanese colonialism, but also from a war-torn country to become an Asian power. Some significant international legal issues, including those which result from the Japanese occupation of Korea, as well as from the Korean War. Let me first touch upon the legacy of the colonialism. The his historical fact that Japan ruled and controlled Korea from 1910 to 1945 caused many international law issues, some of which have still not been settled between Korea and Japan. The most critical and fundamental question, among others, is whether Japanese ruling over Korea was based on the ground of international law. In particular, the validity of two treaties, the Treaty of 1905, which deprived Korea of its diplomatic sovereignty, and Annexation Treaty of 1910, have been the subject of much controversy. Upon Korea's signing the Treaty on Basic Relations with Japan in 1965 to normalize diplomatic relations, the two countries try to solve unsettled legal issues by concluding additional treaties, such as the Agreement on the Settlement of Problems Concerning Property and Claims, Agreement Concerning Cultural Asset and Cultural Cooperation, and Agreement Concerning the Legal Status and Treatment of the Korean Residents in Japan. Without any success, the issue on legality and legitimacy of Japan's ruling over Korea under international law was never solved and rather ended up with the vague provisions in the treaty, which in turn raised a matter of interpretation until the present time. Another key issue arising out of the Japan's colonization of Korea is related to Dokdo, a group of small islets in the East Sea because the issue surrounding Dokdo is open days in the context of the Japanese imperialism and expansionism into Korea. Let me touch upon the, the second issue, international legal issues arising from the Korean War and international uh, relations and also inter-Korean relations. Armed conflict occurs on the Korean peninsula in the early 1950s has raised a number of important legal issues on the international law. The Korean War posed many legal issues, especially related to international humanitarian law, such as the legal characteristic of armed conflict and applicability of the rules of the engagement and the legal meaning of a long-standing ceasefire. As North Korea launched an armed attack against South Korea, on June 25, 1950, a series of the resolutions was adopted by the UN Security Council, and it was the first time the UN Security Council has authorized the use of force since its exception of the 1945, and members of the United Nations acted collectively to repair aggression. As a veto by the Soviet Union was frequently used to block numerous Security Council initiatives during the Korean War, the UN General Assembly adopted a resolution known as Uniting for Peace, which states that if the Security Council failed to exercise its primary responsibility to act as required to maintain international peace and security, Due to lack of unanimity of the permanent members, the General Assembly should take over to keep the impetus for peace. 
What a military demarcation line was drawn on land at the time of the inter-Korean armistice agreement was signed on May 27, 1953. Such a demarcation line did not extend into maritime areas. The seaward extension, known as the Northern Limit Line, so-called NLL, which was drawn by the UN Command General Mark Clark in 1953, has remained contentious and caused confrontations between the two Koreas, as the NLL was not officially part of the Armistice Agreement. Some key inter-Korean issues, among others, include the statehood and recognition, as well as legal characteristics of the agreement signed by the two Koreas. A niche arises from the provision of the Constitution of the Republic of Korea, which stipulates that the territory of the Republic of Korea shall consist of the whole Korean Peninsula, while the Koreas were respectively admitted to the United Nations at the same time. The UN membership issue raised a legal question as to whether the Republic of Korea recognized the North Korea as a state. The issue gets more complicated as a question also arises as to legal characteristic of the agreement on reconciliation, non-aggression, and exchange and cooperation between South and North Korea, which is the known as the Inter-Korean Basic Agreement signed in 1991, which recognized that relations between two Koreas is not a relations as between states, but rather as a special one constituted temporarily in a process of the unification. Let me touch upon briefly about Law of the Sea. The situated at the center of the Nurses Asian Sea, the waters that surrounded three sides of Korea are important for economic, military, and strategic concerns. Such concerns embrace a wide range of the maritime issues, including maritime delimitation and competition for marine resources. Korea has engaged in important legal matters pertaining to the law of the sea that are of vital importance, especially in relation to maritime delimitation in the zones established by the UN Convention on the Law of the Sea. There remains the issue of maritime delimitation due to the overlapping claims over the continent's shelf with the neighboring countries, such as between Korea China in the West Sea and between Korea Japan in the East Sea. The contribution on the part of Korea in relation to maritime issues include its active engagement in international efforts to protect marine safety and marine environment. Since Korea joined the Convention on the International Maritime Organization, IMO, the Korea as a member of a category council with the largest interest in providing international shipping services has been leading the development of the maritime technology such as e-navigation, eco-friendly vessels, and autonomous vessels technology. Let me touch upon the another issues of the democracy and international human rights law. The development of human rights in Korea is closely related to the development of democracy in Korea achieved through the mass protests against the dictatorship and military regime from the 1960s to 1980s. With the development of democracy in Korea since early 1990s, Korea began to accept the major international human rights treaties, ratifying the International Covenant on Civil Political Rights, ICCPR, and its protocol in 1990, and the International Covenant on Economic, Social, and Cultural Rights, also in 1990. Since then, Korea became the party to major international human rights treaties, such as the Convention on the Rights of the Child and Convention Against Torture, and other cruel, inhumane, and degrading treatment or punishment in 1995, an optional protocol to the Convention 
on the rights of the child, on the involvement of children in armed conflicts, and the Convention on the Rights of Persons with Disabilities. In year of 21-201, the National Human Rights Commission was established as a national human rights advocacy institution, along with several truth and reconciliation commissions to investigate human rights violations under previous authoritarian regimes. One of the recent human rights issues include the right of conscientious objection to military service. Conscientious objection has been a topic of much debate in Korea for decades, especially in cases involving Jehovah's Witnesses. The Supreme Court and Constitutional Court has consistently affirmed the punishments of conscientious objectors under Korea's Military Service Act. However, in 2018, the Constitutional Court held that the Korean law that did not recognize conscientious objection was not consistent with the Constitution. In the same year, the Supreme Court ruled that Consensus objection was justifiable under the Military Service Act. Thank you very much.